In this video, I'll go through the game between Jan Kristoff Duda and Arjan Tari in the seventh round of Norway Chess. This is the second classical game between the two players. Remember that Arjan won their first encounter after a draw in the classical game. He managed to beat Duda in the tiebreak with the white pieces, but now Duda in a vengeful mood won with the white pieces in the classical game to even the score. The e4. E5 from Marian, the Offerspiel uh, champion, uh, has had a rough going in Norway chess, but um, uh, probably fancied his chances against the Duda in this game. The Polish number one had also struggled quite heavily to, to score points. Knight c6, the Rue de Pens from Duda, a6, bishop a4, and now f5 from Marian. Uh, not the most common on top level, but uh, very fun to see that Arjan decides to spice things up early in, in the game. f5, d4 from Duda, ed, e5. The point behind this uh, temporary sacri pawn sacrifice is to at least stop or hinder Black's uh, further development of, of minor pieces, especially the, um, uh, the knight on g8 and bishop on f8 is, is struggling uh, now. b5, bishop b3, bishop, uh, bishop b7, castles and knight a5. This is uh, probably quite heavy theory, guys. Uh, I would not recommend uh, doing this at home, but uh, fun, fun to see uh, the players um, uh, encountered in, in such a um, complicated and, and uh, dynamic opening uh, so early in the game. Knight d4. As we can see, the, the computer, uh, or at least as I can see, the computer likes White's position, but this is probably Avian's plan as well. He's been playing very fast in this game uh, so far. 156-56 on the clock. Duda uh, 143. So Duda has not been, uh, been spending too much time either, but at least some. Uh, knight f5 c4. So as we can see, yes, uh, Duda won a pawn on f5 and his uh, development is, is great, but the bishop is trapped on b3. This is the point behind the whole variation, I guess. Um, but uh, even though the bishop is trapped, um, that doesn't mean black is, is winning by, by any means because the king on e8 is quite eerie and uh, needs to, uh, needs to be, be watched at least for, for some moves now for black. Queen, queen b6, knight d5, Arjan decides to take. I follow up with queen c6, queen d4 and queen e6, forcing the knight away. Knight d6. We take. Can't allow this knight to, to stay on d6, that's too dangerous. We take, uh, ed. And now, according to the computers, king f7 would be uh, would be okay for uh, for black. Queen c3, we take on b3, take on f5, so we didn't win the piece, but at least we got our king uh, to, to a safe place. And then knight f6 in the next move, and, and black is supposed to be uh, doing okay, actually. And this is super complicated stuff, but at least... Uh, there was a solution for, for Arian here. Uh, he decided knight f6 immediately was, was a, a fine move as well. However, queen c3 now not only threatens uh, the knight on a5, but also rook e1, which would be devastating for black, because the pin against uh, both uh, queen and king would mean a loss of, of material. So uh, Arian castles. But now we've lost a couple of tempi um, in compared to the other variation. We don't get this pawn on c2, uh, which is a, a huge factor. Uh, knight g4, queen c3. There's no rush in, in taking this, of course. Bishop g5, cb, queen takes b3. Could have considered uh, bishop b7 as well, do that. Queen b3. We take, and now we see that the, the rook on e, uh, e8 might be misplaced because uh, white has lots of pressure against the a6 pawn. So white is actually winning already. Um, that's, uh, that's what can happen against uh, good players or well prepared players in uh, very uh, complicated openings, very tactical sharp openings. You need to be well prepared. Arian was of course well prepared, but uh, Jan Christoph Duda is, uh, is the master tactician so he's uh, he's a uh, tough nut in um, such openings rook e2 f3 knight f6 and uh, white decides calmly to proceed by protecting the pawn on c2 there's no rush in taking this h6 
play, king of one, threatening the rook, a double of, of rooks followed by uh, bishop takes f6, gf, and now suddenly Arian uh, notices that rook e1 forces a trade of rooks and uh, after rook e1, rook e1, there's not much to do for for black. Uh, I mean you could go for something like rook c8, uh, but a calm move like c3 followed by rook e7 would be devastating for, for black. Rook c6 uh, could be played, check, and check, and the pawn on d7 falls, and uh, white is material up, two pawns uh, up, and will win confidently uh, in the end game. Actually, will be after let's say king g6, he will be uh, too much material up for for black to have any counterplay um, in in this uh, in this position. So uh, three against two here, three against two here, and he even has a an extra. Uh, pass pawn on d6 thanks to this uh, maneuver with rook e8, rook e7. So too much material and there's no activity for Arian who decided to uh, to resign. A confident win for uh, for young Christoph Duda and a tough game for, uh, for Arian Tari in the seventh round of Norway Chess.